Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at what you need to know about blood circulation and blood vessels. To begin with, we need to understand the fact that we have a circulatory system which is carrying blood and it's carrying blood around the body, delivering this blood to the tissues and also taking this blood away from the tissues of the body. The question we need to ask ourselves is why? Well, there's a couple of reasons why we have a circulation. First reason is that it needs to deliver stuff. The other reason is that it needs to remove stuff. Again, what are we delivering? What are we removing? Well, one of the things that we are delivering is nutrients. Nutrients in the form of glucose and amino acids and fats, for example. What are we taking away? Well, we're going to be taking away waste, right? And this waste can include things like ammonia and uric acid and a whole multitude of things that we don't or no longer require. It's not just nutrients though, it's also gases that we're delivering. So we're delivering things like oxygen and we're removing things like carbon dioxide, which is the exhaust of the cells. We're also delivering things like hormones as well. So, we know now what the circulatory system does. It's delivering stuff and taking stuff away. And it actually does this through two separate circulations. We have what we call a systemic circulation, which is where we go from the left-hand side of the heart to deliver all these things to the tissues of the body. This is called, like I said, the systemic circulation. Sometimes it's referred to as the peripheral circulation. And then we also have what we call the pulmonary circulation. So this is going to be the right-hand side of the heart going to the lungs. So the pulmonary circulation. So we've got these two different circulations. Now, a couple of other things. This blood that we're pushing through to deliver these nutrients, oxygen, gases, hormones, and to take various things away, we have around about five liters of this blood in our body. So it depends on your body size and your sex, for example, but generally speaking, 7% of your body weight is the volume of blood in your body. So for me, that's around about five liters. Now this five liters is gonna be distributed to various tissues of your body. So at rest, what you're gonna find is that at any one moment, this heart is gonna be contracting, relaxing, contracting, relaxing. And if you calculate how much it contracts and relax over one minute, you'll find that it ends up pumping out around about five liters of blood. So we do have five liters in our entire circulation, and in the span of one minute, five liters at rest actually gets pumped out to go to the tissues of your body. Of this five liters, what you're gonna find is that 5% goes to the coronary arteries to feed the heart itself, 15% goes to the brain, 25% goes to our gut, 20% goes to the kidneys, 20% goes to the muscles, and 5% goes to our skin. The remaining 10% goes to other tissues of the body. Now, as we leave the heart, I wanna look at the different vessels that are involved. So there's a whole range of different vessels that we need to go through. So what we're gonna find, from the left-hand side of the heart, the blood vessels that leave the heart. In actual fact, any time a vessel moves away from the heart, think of the A in a way, any time it moves away, it's gonna be an artery. So even if it's the left or right hand side, we know that all the vessels that leave the heart leave from the ventricles. So this is leaving the heart, this is leaving the heart. They're moving away from the heart to go to specific tissues. If it's the left-hand side, it's the tissues of the body. If it's the right-hand side, it's the lungs. This vessel is called an artery. So arteries move away from the heart. So here we've got an artery. What do you need to know about arteries? Well, arteries have huge amounts of elastic tissue. Why is this important? Think about this, right? This left-hand side of the heart, it's getting oxygenated blood from the lungs. It fills up and then it contracts to pump that blood out. Now, it's going to be delivering this oxygenated and nutrient-rich blood to all the tissues of the body. 
from the top of the head, so the brain, down to the tip of my toes. It needs to generate force or it needs to generate pressure, which means that the highest amount of pressure found in our vessels will be found in our arteries because that's the first vessel that leaves the heart. It's gonna be under the highest amount of pressure, which means that heart contracts, the blood goes out, that artery needs to stretch. But most importantly, not just stretch, that artery needs to snap back. So it needs huge amounts of elastic tissue present, not just so it can stretch, but more importantly again, so it can snap back. So arteries are elastic based vessels. So here I wanna highlight the different vessels that we're gonna be talking about. And like I said, here we've got arteries. Elastic vessels. Now the arteries you'll find start to branch like a tree, branch and branch and branch. And you can see them branching here. These branches are obviously gonna be smaller than arteries. And what you'll find is that the terminal aspect of the artery, so right at the very end, after all these branches, the smallest arteries that you'll find are called arterioles. So these here, are arterioles. Let's label them. Now what do we know about arterioles? Well, they're not really elastic like the big arteries. They have lots of smooth muscle. Lots of smooth muscle. So you can see all this smooth muscle wrapped around these arterioles. Why is this important for us to know that there's smooth muscles around arterioles? Well, the tissues of our body need to be fed oxygen and nutrients. Some need to be fed more so than others and the demands of the body can change over time and in response to certain environments. So we need a way to redirect and deliver blood in different quantities and different amounts under different pressures depending on the environment that we're under. Let's just say I need to start exercising, I need to deliver more oxygen and nutrients to my muscles compared to other tissues of my body. And the way that we do that is through these arterioles, specifically the smooth muscle. The smooth muscle is going to respond to the nervous system, such as the autonomic nervous system, more specifically the sympathetic nervous system, sends noradrenaline down to tell them to constrict, right? But it can also not tell it to constrict and tells it to relax. This obviously redirects blood. There's also local effects that can happen, right? So if this tissue is really hungry for oxygen, it's gonna produce high amounts of carbon dioxide and it's gonna have low amounts of oxygen and it's gonna have a whole bunch of metabolic byproducts just accumulating. All of these are local signals that can tell the blood vessel to dilate and open up, to bring more blood in. That, in conjunction to other vessels constricting, is going to redirect blood. So you're going to have blood backing up if it constricts and if it dilates like here at the muscle, that blood will then be under a higher pressure to deliver the muscle or deliver the oxygen and nutrients to the muscle. So the, the smooth muscle that's present within our arterioles, and let's write this down. So we wrote elastic here. Let's write muscle here for arterioles. It's really important, they're also known as resistance vessels, okay? So arteries are known as elastic vessels. Our arterioles, like these two here, are known as resistance vessels. Brilliant. At the end of these arterioles, we then hit the capillary beds. This is the site of exchange. This is where we're gonna deliver oxygen, we're gonna deliver nutrients, and we're gonna receive all of the metabolic byproducts and waste and gases and so forth. So here is the capillary bed. And they are the site of exchange. And I'm just gonna label this like that the site of exchange. On the other end of capillaries, we're gonna have predominantly deoxygenated or less oxygenated blood with fewer nutrients and higher levels of waste. And this blood gets collected in venules. So this is the first part here, venules, and then ultimately drain into veins. So we have venules and veins. And what you need to know about venules and veins is that they have a huge capacity to hold blood. 
huge capacity. So if I were to pour a whole bunch of fluid or blood or whatever it may be into veins, they fill up like a balloon. Now you might be thinking, isn't that similar to the arteries? That's under high pressure. So that stretches too. But because of all the elastic tissue in the arteries, they can snap back. But veins are a little bit different. They don't have all this elastic tissue but they stretch because they're very thin and they've got a little bit of muscle so they can contract if they need to. But because they can stretch so much and hold so much blood, they're known as capacitance vessels. Capacitance vessels. So here we've got venules and veins. And again, they're known as capacitance vessels. And just to reiterate, the point of capacitance vessels is they hold huge amounts of blood. In actual fact, the veins and venules are the body's major reservoir for blood. So even though I said that of the five liters that, it gets, that gets ejected from the heart every single minute, this is how it's broken up to the tissues of the body, where is this five liters of blood sitting at any one moment? So what we're gonna find is this. 7% of the five liters of our blood is gonna be in any one moment found in our heart. Then what you're gonna find is that around about 13% is gonna be found in the arteries. Around about 7% is gonna be found in the arterioles and capillaries. So both arterioles and capillaries, we're gonna have 7%. We have 64% of the blood in our veins and venules, 64%. And then we have 9% in our pulmonary circulation. So have a look at that. We've got 7% of our blood in any one moment in our heart, 13% in our arteries, 7% in our arterioles and capillary beds, 64% in our veins and venules, and 9% in our pulmonary circulation. Most of our blood is sitting in our veins and venules, 64%. This is important because it is our reservoir. Again, they're capacitance vessels. They have the capacity to hold all this blood. It's a reservoir. If we need to bring more blood back to the heart, we can do so because there's a little bit of smooth muscle in our veins that we can squeeze. And if we squeeze it, we can deliver this blood back into our heart. And remember, the more blood we deliver into our heart means the more blood that we can eject out of our heart. So what you can find is that arteries are elastic. Arterioles have smooth muscle, they're resistance vessels. Capillaries are the site of exchange. Venules and veins, well, they're very thin-walled and they can stretch a huge amount. They're called capacitance vessels and they hold most of the reservoir of our body's blood. So this is a quick summary of the circulation of our blood and also the various vessels of our circulatory system. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.